welcome everyone. I think you know who the top table is, so uh, I think Gail's going to kick us off. Um, there's no embargo on this, so over to you. Warren, um, how tempted were you to make changes? Uh, not very. <laughs> when Ramtree spoke this week about how this has been possibly cost starting places, with that in mind, did you not look at Macro's four counties and yellow card and think maybe you should make a change here? No. New Zealand, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't think I just one was that. I mean, the Makavuna Polar one, you, you look at that and, you, and then you put the Cody Taylor one side by side as we did. Exactly the same, he's a bit unlucky. The one that the referee's penalised him for going on his knee, it's absolutely marginal where he's competed on the ball. So um, he, has, he hasn't collected Barrett's head or anything. He's, I mean, that's been going on in the first two test matches. So, you know. So well, it's not, and then there's a scrum penalty, so. So you've not brought him aside and you haven't had a word with him this week about it? We've spoken to the team about keep, uh, making sure that we give away less penalties than than the opposition, but um, to me, I, I, I didn't I didn't think anything wrong with the first one where he's gone to charge down a kick and he's followed through, so and that's been given a penalty. Uh, like I said, Cody T Taylor does exactly the same thing in exactly the same time frame, and it's not a penalty. Um, so, they were, they, I mean, there were dumber ones than that. Dumber penalties given away in the game by, you know, other players. So, that, those are the ones that are, are avoidable. I just thought there was a couple of times that Mucka was a bit unlucky. In terms of your build-up this week, we've been hearing this morning about how physical New Zealand's build-up has been a few punches thrown. By contrast, you decided to take a different approach. Given it's worked before, how surprised are you that people have questioned your methods this week? I always get questioned, Gail, about everything. Um, so it's not it's not unusual uh, for people to ever pop at me and question things. Uh, we had a pretty pretty tasty session today, and there was. Uh, uh, there was some verbals anyway. It was a bit, uh, it was a bit testy today. So uh, obviously everyone is pretty aware um, how important the game is. But it's about having emotional control, isn't it? You want to, you don't, you want to take it to the edge, but you don't want to go over the top as well. How much bigger does Auckland feel than Sydney four years ago? Um, well, to be honest, we haven't. Uh, we're a little bit isolated here in the hotel. You get you get to see people um, on the way to training and, and match day and stuff. So, like a, probably over the next couple of days, we'll probably really uh, feel the impact of that. There's no doubt that there was. I thought the, the fans and the crowd in Wellington were were fantastic, and the support that the that we had and the players were given from the from the crowd was obviously had an impact. Um, and we're looking forward to. A brilliant atmosphere on Saturday. Is there any other way of looking at this than a career-defining moment for everybody involved? Um, in terms of what coaches, coaches players. I don't. Think, it doesn't make any difference to the players. I mean, there's no pressure on players from a Lions perspective because uh, they go back to the the luxury of their club side and their and their, and their national union. So, what about coaches, then? Um, there's always a lot of pressure on, on the coaches. I mean, that's something we said before in experience in 2013 and coaches in 2009 so um, there's you know there's no there's no difference to that you, you know when you take the job on that there's going to be a lot of focus on 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 the coaches and you know particularly the head coach sometimes and but you know that's part of the part of the expectation part of the role and um, it's not any, any different to, to 2013 you? no not at all I'm pretty happy with what I've achieved in my career, so um, I'll probably 2019. I'll probably finish up after the World Cup and go to the beach and maybe retire, enjoy myself. So that's definitely not career-defining. I can promise you that. Lauren, talking of enjoying yourselves, how pleased are you with the effect of Queenstown when it comes to getting the intensity levels right for Saturday? Look, I, look, I don't know. I, I, all I know is these guys needed a break. I mean, they've been training for 11 months, and we had one day off, which was the Wednesday in Wellington before the first test. It was the first day that we've had off, and that we weren't travelling or doing something. So, the plan was to 
to give them a couple of days off. Now we could have come to Auckland, flown to Auckland and given them a couple of days off here, but uh, there was an opportunity for us to, when you come to New Zealand, you come so far away and um, you know, it's probably it's one of the most beautiful countries in the world and you get a chance to go to Queenstown and you want to, you want to give the players an opportunity to experience that. You know, why, why not avail of that? Why not use that and as a chance to have a couple of breaks, a couple of days off and not make a big issue of where the venue was? Um, so, um, yeah, we could have done it anywhere, but we decided to do it somewhere that's incredibly beautiful and we, and we did the same in, in Noosa uh, four years ago. And so, um, it's something that, you know, we've, we've found that worked in 2009 and, and 2013. I know that, that we've used it with Wales on a few occasions and we used it in the World Cup. Um, when we had a short turn around from a, towards a big game from a Sunday to a Saturday game, we took the Monday, Tuesday off, train Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, very similar to this week, and you know had a pretty good victory in, in London. So um, you know it's something that we've used. We, we we know what the template is, and so it's and so it's not anything different to to what a lot of the players have experienced in the past. And Warren, what's your thoughts on the All Black team that's been named? Obviously, they had to make a decision at centre, but they've really mixed up the back three, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, I, I was uh, probably the the one surprise for me was Severe being called back in, but obviously um, he's been called back in because of his, exper his experience with Barrett at, and uh, Lamarpe at. Uh, at 12, you know, not having a lot of experience, first starts, and and his experience, and and I think the familiar combination with um, with uh, Barrett at 10 as well, and the role that they that they have with the Hurricanes, and we expect defensively the All Blacks to be much more aggressive. We expect him to play um, severe, to play a lot more front line, uh, to try and shut us down from a from a defensive bit point of view, and um, and I think that. That's the reason that decision is made, and um, so you know that that was probably you know initially the one surprise, but you can understand that the the selection with um, Sevilla coming back in. Sam, how excited are you, and how bang on is the squad in terms of getting that that preparation right to be for Saturday? Um, yeah, all feeling pretty pretty chilled out at the minute. I think it was good to have that break in Queenstown and, and like Warren said we've been training for a long time this season so it's just about recovering and getting the bodies right and the minds right and you know it's still guys with seeing physios and masses and doing pool recovery and on the laptops keeping on top of moves and things so um, you still keep the brain ticking over but um, yeah right now I don't really get I won't get too excited until match day really I think you, you don't want to waste too much emotional energy over such a big game you appreciate it is going to be probably the biggest game that we've played in um, but that's what every sacrifice you've made since you were a young kid and decided to be a rugby player is all about for moments like this so um, all the guys are, are really excited and preparations going well for the game and finally for me obviously you missed the decider four years ago how personally as much as for the squad is it going to be great to, to run out there and have this chance at Eden Park of all places against the All Blacks uh, yeah that is one thing I did say four years ago and you know selection for this tour is out of my hands so you can't really think about it too much but four years ago I did feel like um, it was a little bit of unfinished business for me personally I would have loved to have finished off that tour so for me um, I was delighted when I found out I was going to be in the team again for this third side and test. Um, and you know, when my parents and friends are asking what I think is going to happen, you know, I always say, you know, what what happens happens. I think things happen for a reason. But if I if I deserve to play, then then I'll get picked. And and, I'll, and if you don't, then you just get on with it. And I'm always the sort of person I keep my head down and train hard and just wait for the next opportunity. So really pleased that you know I can have a chance to contribute into this into this third game and. Um, yeah, it'd be, be definitely the biggest game I've played in. Sam, what sort of a challenge are you expecting from New Zealand on Saturday night? Um, I think it'll be a probably my, I think it's about my 10th game I would have played against New Zealand, ninth or 10th game, so come up against them a lot of times, but I definitely expect a reaction, just like we had one in the second mm -hmm. test after the first test defeat. Um, but we've got all week to, to try, and, try and get ready for that, so I think it's going to be um, a real interesting proper epic test match I think it's going to be very to and fro there's going to be patches we're under pressure there's going to be patches who's under pressure um, but hopefully we've got a pretty experienced team out there and that's going to be enough to, to pull us through and how important do you reckon the conditions are adapting to the conditions will be um, I, I, we'd be happy to play in any conditions really um, we played in dry weather on this tour and wet weather and 
you know, we, we got a plan for both, so I'd be confident that we can we can function, you know, whatever the weather. Warren, what has to be different this week, or were you looking for the, the most improvements from Alliance point of view? No, oh, like there's no doubt we weren't happy with the number of penalties we gave away, so that's been our, our focus in terms of um, not giving away soft penalties. That's that's definitely been um, you know, what we've spoken about. Um, but we, we haven't even really spoken about the All Blacks. We haven't. I mean, it's it's been about us. It's kind of been a little bit. You feel it feels a little bit ironic and a bit strange and almost like a role reversal. But you know, you when you're picking when you play against the All Blacks, you. you Trying to stop all their threats, and you're picking a team to do that. But, but we haven't even spoken about them. We're just concentrating on ourselves and our own game, and going out and playing and doing what we've been doing, and um, and what's been successful for us. There hasn't been too much chat about the individuals and their team as a player. We haven't even spoken about. Even, we didn't even speak today about the, the team that was selected. The players knew the team. We didn't speak about any individuals or whatever. Uh, it was just about ourselves and concentrating on ourselves and. And we've continued to do that over the last few weeks, and we'll go out there, and you know we're happy with the way we're playing. We're happy with the chances we're creating, tries that we're scoring at the moment. A um, couple of things to to improve on, but um, I think we should all be excited for what potentially is going one hell of a test match. And how much more within the group is there in terms of potential? Oh, we just we we think we're scratching the surface. We think this team's got better and better, and we think we can get better on Saturday. Um, GPS numbers. We looked at our GPS numbers, and uh, I, I haven't seen it before. And the condition has said they haven't seen um, us go up in the in the fourth quarter like that um, ever before. I mean, we our meterage increase and our intensity increase in, in the large last quarter. So it just shows what good shape we're in physically, what good shape we're in sort of mentally to to be able to do that. And we know as players that we've got another level in us, and. Uh, and that's kind of exciting. It's, uh, it's incredibly exciting that um, the players feel like if we click, then we can do something pretty special. And just a final one in terms of the referee for Saturday night. The laws of the game are the same on all over the world. Referees interpret things slightly differently <coughs> sometimes. What are you expecting from Roman Um I just hope the referees go in with an open mind. That's all I'm asking. They're going for an open mind that the Lions, if they play well enough, are good enough for winning. That's all, that's all I ask. Nick? Sam, uh, given the All Blacks are without maybe five of their first choice players, and uh, there's uh, the coaches, Graham Rampy, have spoken about you know the, the game not really being put on the park yet, as, as Warren intimated just then. What's the belief like in the squad amongst you guys in the Um I learned the hard way last year that you know it doesn't matter how many players they've got missing, they'll always still be a quality outfit. I didn't believe that last year either, and I was proved right. So um, I don't think that will make too much of a difference. You know, the guys who come in are still extremely talented rugby players. But um, like Warren said, I think this week the most important thing is it, it is about us this week. And I always say about um, when people ask me about preparation, you've got to control what you're in control of. And I'm not in control of which foot Bowden Barrett steps off or which which direction of play they're going to go you just got to focus on what you can do so what we can do in defence what we can do in the contact area set piece um, and you get all those things right and it takes you a long way to win the game so that's the way I, I approach matches you know so make sure we tick all those boxes Wednesday Thursday and Friday and we've had two good training sessions so far and I think the boys will mentally be in an extremely good place after our captains run tomorrow and believe we can do a good job Nick Warren you said obviously that your players aren't under any pressure does that mean then uh, I didn't say that, did I? You asked if you were under pressure. You said the players weren't under pressure. You said the coaches were. I oh, know you're talking. That wasn't the question. Okay, so the question was um, you asked about under an alliance. So I don't think the players are under any pressure yeah. for for their future. Okay. Because oh, a lot they can they can go on alliance tour and be, you know, play and be relaxed. You know, it's not about. Um, it's not going to. I don't think it's going to affect their future selections because you know I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not for a number of them not their coaches so it's not going to make a difference for them. That's all I'm saying about that. But they are under pressure this weekend. Do you think? So? Well, know. well, we're all under pressure, aren't we? Because a good pressure, isn't it? You know, kind of you got to be excited about this. For a lot of them, it's some of the biggest games of their lives. So um, it's not going to define them though. It's going to be it's a, it's a pressure that you relish and. And as Sam said, you, you, it's why you do all those hours of training and preparation because you want those moments, you want those big moments in sport. And 
sometimes they don't come around that often. But if you're lucky enough to play in you know finals and big matches and and Saturday's a decider, and you, there's nothing better than as a top sportsman or an athlete having the opportunity to do that. And yeah, and, that, and that's that's pressure about the the match, but not pressure about the future. Is it an advantage for you though that obviously the All Blacks stay together and whatever happens next does does affect those guys? Does it, does it, does it, is it an advantage for you guys that I mean, it's obviously not a shot to nothing, but you've got everything on the line for this, and you know, like you said, go set twice afterwards. Well, I think. Well, I think I think for a group of players that uh, there's no doubt that, and we haven't spoken about that maybe in the next 24 hours and stuff is that they have an opportunity to leave a bit of a legacy, don't they? That opportunity that hasn't. You know, it's been since 1971. I think it was 11, 11 tours in New Zealand. Only one there ever been won. So um, they were a chance to do something special, and and you and you get those moments in your life, and you don't want those moments to pass you by. And that's that's what a big big occasions and big sporting events are about. And so I have no doubt that not not today, but tomorrow and Saturday, the the, the players will start thinking about. It. And we don't. And as Sam said, you don't want to emotionally get too involved and. And creating those moments at the moment, that, 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 that's too far away because you'll <coughs> you sp spend yourself emotionally and that'll take away from your preparation and your, and your performance and, and, that, and that'll build slowly over the next um, 48 hours or so to, to the match as, as it starts to get closer and, and the players start to realise that um, what potentially could happen and, and like I said what a special moment that could be when he, when his series in New Zealand creating a legacy, creating history for themselves. Um, and, and and doing something special. And, and you talked about your future not being relevant to this weekend, even necessarily, in terms of what you do after the World Cup. Uh, um, I'm, I, look, I'm a great believer in what will be, will be. I, I, that's, a, that's the way I've always been. I, I I don't I don't think about the future. I, I'm not sitting. I don't sit here and plan what am I going to do in 2019 or what am I going to do next year. Um, things have just ha happened for the right reason. I've, been lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time, and and the, for me, the, the future will take care of itself. You know, I, got, I have to believe that because that's kind of the way that I've been. It's I'm, I don't I don't sit here and plan and plot what's going to happen. If if you're successful and you with it, wherever you are in your environment, then opportunities come your way, and that's kind of the way that I look at what will happen over the next couple of years. And Saturday would be great to win. But then the preparation, the focus goes on the autumn, the Six Nations, and preparing for Wales for the World Cup in 2019. Chris, what have you enjoyed the last few weeks? Or will that depend on Saturday's result? As, uh, look, I've said the other day, it was, the last few weeks have always have been challenging, probably more challenging uh, for my family and stuff. It's been it's been full on. It's been hard preparing uh, two teams for a week, and like I said, we haven't had we haven't been based in one place, and the amount of travel and we've had to do and. Uh, the quality of opposition has, has been great from a rugby perspective, but it means it's been the preparation has been hardest. Having spoken to the other coaches, has been by far the hardest tour that we've been on as coaches, and the, the amount of hours and preparation the coaches and and the trainers and staff and the medics have been putting into the, you know the hours, the time they get up in the morning and finish at night has been has been um, has been tough, but you know. Hopefully we get the result on Saturday that makes it um, all worthwhile and rewarding from afterwards. So how self-satisfying would it be, given all that's been going on and all the challenges you faced, to, to, to get a series win against the Warriors? Uh, that, that'll be reflective, I think. That'll be afterwards. I'll, I'll probably think back and look on um, some of the things that have happened. Look, <coughs> I have to reiterate that. The hospitality that we've had in New Zealand, that the people where we've gone have been have been brilliant. Um, the support that I've had personally from from friends, family, um, ex teammates, you know, people off the street has just been phenomenal, and you know I really appreciate that. Um, we've been lucky enough to, to come and experience the intensity of, of rugby in New Zealand, and I think all of us understand why you know they're the best rugby nation in the world because um, the structures they have in place, the teams that we play against, and and I think all of us have learned a lot from from those experiences over the last few weeks, and and hopefully, uh, not just as coaches, but players when they go back to the UK. I'm sure if, if the this group of players were to go and play a club game back in the UK um, or, or Ireland next week, they they would 
be amazed by how slow the pace of the game was compared to what they've experienced in the last few weeks. So, you know, we've got to take that that knowledge and that experience back to Northern Hemisphere rugby and, and transfer that hopefully into what what we've learned as, as players and coaches over, um, for, you know, for the next season in particular. Warren, you talk about this team leaving a legacy. What, what do you want that legacy to be? How do you want it to be remembered at the end of the series? Um, we, you know, I think we were conscious that coming to New Zealand that we wanted to be seen as being good tourists, you know, both on and off the field. And I, I'd like to think we've we've done that. Um, and you know, people tried to pigeonhole us that we we're going to play uh, a pretty sort of direct, boring game game in terms of the way we played. I think we've played some great rugby. Um, we know we've stressed the All Blacks on at times, and at times, and you know we scored some great tries. And 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 as a team, we felt we've got better as as the time that we've had together has gone on. Look, it's it's been tough, but um, the the atmosphere at the games has been phenomenal. Um, seeing the support that we've had from uh, the UK and Ireland has, has just been has been incredible. Um, that you know, like I said. Um, and, and I mean, hope both sets of fans have enjoyed that, and just shows you know, how special the Lions are, and it's something that we need to protect for the future. And um, but you know, it'd be nice to be. Um, you always want to be regarded as being a winner, don't you? And so that's that's for us. The focus is uh, is on winning on um, on Saturday and, on, and winning a series, and that was our ultimate goal when we came along, is having that confidence and belief to get on the plane that. We were good enough to win in New Zealand, you know, even though we were written off right from day one. Warren, what would you say is the um, it's been the toughest part of this journey to get your team to where they are now? Um, um, yeah, the, the, the toughest part has been having the, the preparation time with the with the team, really. I suppose in terms of. Um, You've had to make sacrifices because you're preparing two teams a week, and um, so that that's you know I think in the future is I've I don't know how many games they're going to be in the future for Lions tours, but they need to have that time together in, in the UK or Ireland before they get on the plane and have some 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 proper preparation time, um, whatever country they're at there, and, and maybe not a game before the first test as well, so you can prepare properly for that first test and give yourselves the, the best opportunity. So. That's been the biggest challenge, but we, we knew right from the start, we knew it was going to be tough, um, and we like to think that we've tried to deal with that in the best way that we could. I know there's been people who have disagreed with the way that we've done that, but, and but you know, after this I'll reflect back and say, you know, were some of those decisions the right decisions? I don't always make the right calls, but you try and make the decisions you think are right at the time, and, but, as you know, as, as in 2013, I, you know, I, I'm always someone who reflects back on decisions and and uh, and I'd like to think I'm happy enough to put my hand up and say look I made a mistake or that was a wrong call or I'd, d I'd do it differently in the future and that's that's part of learning about the process and part about learning about um, what you do to make things better in the future and um, like I said I'm not always right but sometimes you get lucky and get, get a right call every now and again. So one more please Ross, thank you. Warren we talked about how there were nine changes between the first and the third test back in 2013. You've the luxury of selecting nine changes. You expect casualties on this tour because of the intensity of the fixtures. How surprised are you that you've got that luxury? Yeah, no, pretty surprised, yeah. Uh, I think uh, our medics have done a brilliant job uh, keeping the players fit and, uh, from, from week to week. Um, I think the coaches and the and the and the fitness staff have managed the players really well in terms of, you know, when they've been into you know contact sessions, stayed out of contact sessions, missed, missed some of the training sessions. You, you've got to manage players as well as you possibly can, and um, in, in the modern game. And I think we've trained smartly as well. I think we've trained. Um, we looked at some of our um, GPS numbers um, uh, over the over the course of the. We've been here, and, and the intensity we've had at training has been higher in the games. So the guys, you know, they know that they've done the work. They know they've been trained at a high intensity. And we haven't had long sessions. I think today was about 45 minutes, 
Uh, yesterday we were a little bit longer than that, so you know, 40, 45 minute training sessions tomorrow will be really short and sharp. So we can transfer hopefully what we've done into trainings, into the games, and and the guys are in good shape. Um, end of a long season, so we've been looking at intensity, and, and I think the players have. <coughs> You know, potentially the way that have been managed in terms of you know how much has been full-on contact stuff and and and, and the length and the intensity of trainings. Um, and I think it comes down to some experience and and backing the advice and opinion of all the staff that you have involved. You know, who whether it's the medics or the conditioners. And we sit down um, every day. I sit down with the with the medics and and with the conditioners and talk about what tomorrow is going to look like. You know. Reflecting on on the training from the day before and how much we need to do and um, and you know I think we've we've been lucky enough um, from that fantastic group of people that we've got to work with and I think that's helped in terms of maybe keeping some some players um, on the park and not picking up too many injuries because if you look at the quality of opposition that we had before the start of the tour we we may have expected more than the number of casualties that we've had. Thank you very much. Cheers.